Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics, live on Channel's television. I'm Sean sure Kimaloe in Abuja. Tonight, we begin with a critical development in the lead-up to the highly anticipated governorship elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi State, which is scheduled to be on the 11th of November 2023. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is gearing up for a crucial uh, round of these elections and have organized what they call a mock accreditation exercise as part of their preparations for the upcoming elections. This exercise will play a vital role in ensuring a smooth and efficient electoral process for the people of these states. A lot more Nigerians will now be more critical with the umpire considering some of the glitches and errors experienced in the last general elections. A set of elections in November will give the umpire an opportunity to fix what has become a sort of a damaged reputation in a bid to enhance the integrity of the democratic process, INEC has organized this series of mock accreditation events across the three states. And these exercises will allow INEC officials to test their equipment, fine tune their procedures, and address any potential challenges before the actual election day. The mock accreditation is expected to serve as a litmus test for the Electoral Commission, ensuring that the November 11 elections will be conducted in a fair, transparent, and efficient manner. I'd like you to listen to the INEC resident, uh, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, over these uh, preparations. The method is as provided by law. Electronic accreditation, electronic upload of results on the IREF portal, and that is why we are doing this mock. So please disregard whatever was reported about what the rep was said to have said in Bielsa. Uh, that's going to be the procedure. And it's for that reason that I will advise you also for those who are registered on the IREF portal that in the next two hours or so, you should go to the IREF portal. You'll see the result of the mock from all the three states. Next week, Friday, there is going to be a high-level meeting in Abuja um, chaired by myself and the National Security Advisor in which all the security chiefs will be present, no representation, to discuss the issue of security uh, for the three states, so on top of the situation in terms of security arrangement and security deployment. That is the ANEC chairman, and a lot of issues have come up in relation to how the results are going to be transmitted. Uh, yeah, anybody who watched and monitor the presidential election petition tribunal, uh, you will know what has been a major debate between the political parties and INEC over the transmission of the result. Will IREV, which is uh, the cloud space where INEC dumped some of these results that are being posted from the uh, polling unit up on the cloud where you can cross-check the result, will it be in use? How will INEC electronically conduct, uh, I mean, uh, post the results? These are some of the issues. Also tonight, our attention is also going to be on Lagos State. Now, we're going to be having an interview with one of uh, the cabinet members in uh, the Sanwolu government. As we delve into the recent arrest, clampdowns on outlets, and the shutting of markets in Lagos due to environmental breaches. This crackdown comes as part of the state's commitment to enhancing environmental sustainability and ensuring that businesses and markets within Lagos are operating in compliance with environmental regulations. Over the past weeks, we've seen in Lagos, uh, the Environment Ministry in Lagos seems to have carried the burden of pushing Samuelu's agenda uh, in uh, making sure that... Uh, uh, environmental breaches are read out of uh, that state. So we've seen a surge in enforcement actions against establishments that have been flouting environmental regulations. This has generated significant public interest and raised questions about the state's approach to environmental enforcement. Tonight, we'll sit down with the Commissioner for Environment in Lagos and uh, get uh, the rationale behind these actions, their impact on the local economy, and the steps the state 
government is taking to maintain a clean and sustainable environment for Lagosians. Tonight, I'm being joined from our Lagos studio by Tokumba Wahab, who is a commissioner for environment in Lagos. Thank you so much, Tokumba, for joining us tonight on the program. Pleasure. Sure. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, let's begin. Uh, it does look like um, from usually in Lagos, we see more of activities in the works ministry, uh, in uh, the transport ministry, and in some other ministry. But environment seems to have been the poster ministry of the Songolu cabinet uh, government. Um, why is this an attention for the Songolu government? It does look like early in the day, is that the one of the major focal points of this government? Or what exactly has brought these activities that we have seen recently? Um, thank you very much, Shion. This is a template we're going to use for the next four years. The Ministry of Environment and Water Resources is a public-facing ministry, which invariably means we have seen, we have felt in everything that happens in the ecosystem by Lagosians. And we have appraised where we are, and we say to ourselves, we can't play the ostrich going further. We need to take the bull by the horn and address the critical issues affecting the environment. And that's what we've been doing for the past few weeks. As an understanding, um, we've seen these clamp downs and uh, this shutting and arrest that have been made. Uh, we understand about 30 persons were arrested a few days ago. Uh, two popular markets, Owodi Oniri Market, my 12 markets have been shot. Um, uh, some nightclubs, some restaurants have been shot in Lagos. Um, for, for, I mean, uh, for, for the sake of clarity, there are those who believe that some of these actions are politically driven. Why are they shutting down of some of these places? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Shil. We did just clamp down markets and um, business places. We served requisite notices. La Sepa served, Loma served, and we gave them time to conform with the requirements of the law. For instance, um, we served Alea Biagba market, we served the market at uh, um, Abuli Egba, we served the market at Oyingbo, telling them you have to clean up your environment and meet up the requirements to sell in these places. But typical of Nigerians, you know, brazen in our attitude, brazen in our conduct, believing is business as usual. So when the notices expired, we had to shut them down. And when they complied with the requirement of Loma, we opened them. So, what's, what's tribal about it? What's ethnic about it? Oh, we also, after opening them, other markets that are not complied, we had to make them conform with the laws. Okay, we shot Ladipo. And so what? Ladipo was so dirty. Those that trade in Ladipo, are there superhumans that those, those that trade at um, Oyingbo markets? No. It's a level playing field. Three days ago, uh, my 12 market was shot. And within the span of 48 hours, the, they did everything they ought to have right. done in, in for the weeks. elections, you know what happened about people who live and work in Ladipo market. So elections have been won and lost, cases are in court. And a few days later, a few weeks later, government is shutting down businesses around Ladipo where they are the so perceived opponents or those who are in the stronghold of the opposition to the APC government have their business being shut down. Don't you think rationally or somehow people will think that this is a witch hunt? So I don't see ethnicity in enforcement. I don't see color. I don't see race. I don't see creed. I see the law. And I see infractions. So if you throw this at me, what do you throw at me when I said I shut down Alaya Biagba market at Ajegunle? What do you throw at me when I said I shut and reopened my 12 markets? What will you say about the Imbo markets? So we should stop elevating these ethnic divides. 
Whatever is wrong is wrong. Whatever is right is right. And that's what we're trying to do. And we should get used to it. So this market, for example, my 12 Owodeonere market, these are some of the most popular markets in Lagos. Uh, what did you find out about these markets before they are being shut down? Thank you very much. Very dirty, very filthy. Not befitting of a market, so to say. And you see, these are places where people come to buy and sell things that we consume at home. These places also come from somewhere to sell and trade there. So if they are not meeting all the requirements of the law, why can't we take actions against them? Why must we cherry pick our enforcement? We didn't just come to my 12 three days ago, all over the only three, um, three days ago. We started from Monibo Market, Ali Abi Agba Market, um, the market at Abuli Agba. Ted Show, part of Ted Show had to be, look, see, enforcement is enforcement, level playing field, and let's do the right thing. Now, within 48 hours, we had to reopen um, my 12 market because they complied. They were selling on the street, they covered the whole lane, the service lane was taken over by traders. They complied in 48 hours. Why must we enforce for them to comply? That's the question we must ask ourselves. Must we? Must we enforce for people to comply, to do the right thing? No. But it's, our, it's in our nature to be brazen. And this cannot go on. We have to abate that nuisance. And that's what we're trying to do. So what about, okay, so you're talking about Odeo Nini, the My 12 market, or those who believe that uh, if notices were given, and considering that uh, in, a, in a moment and a period where the president declared that uh, a state of emergency on food security in the country, that the impact on my 12 market as a food market and where you have a convergence of marketers coming in and out of Lagos trading, that that will impact on food inflation in Lagos. Did you see uh, the possibility of the impact on the local economy, uh, when you were given the notices before you shut it down, your shutdown will make uh, will culminate into a punitive measure, which will have an effect on the local economy. Did you did you weigh these uh, these effects? Sure, sure. We don't just take decisions because we want to take decisions. We weigh all the options, and that was why we had to ensure they serve them notices to comply. But when they fail, what do you have to do? You have to enforce the law, and you see. If we go the emotional route to say um, there will be food inflation, have you quantified what we're going to lose if there's a cholera outbreak because of the future environment we are going to buy from? Have you ever thought about that in the old matrix? Have you, have you ever thought about if there's a cholera outbreak, for instance, the state will be spending so much money on health to contain it? So if your environment is clean, however, that will be saved for other projects in the state. So let us put it in perspective. We understand what you're talking about, but we can't be emotional with our enforcement. Yes, and I'm glad they complied in 48 hours, unlike the other markets, and we opened them for business. I mean, uh, we know the rains are heavily here, and if you look, uh, look at Lagos State, it's uh, a low-lying coastal city. Uh, those experts will say that it's one meter above sea level. In fact, there are areas in Lagos that it's believed that uh, if care is not taken, might be swept away uh, by rainwaters if there are rains. I mean, look at the so-called eyebrow areas of Lagos State, for example, Lekki area, Lekki Aja Axis. Uh, you will see what is happening to them every day. I see that uh, and some of the uh, footage that we have how you and your enforcement team have gone round in Lekki area, shutting down uh, some uh, buildings, and we see people wailing and crying uh, when you said that their buildings are going to be brought down. Um, so the question is, what was the Lagos State government doing? It's the same APC government over the last few years. Uh, people were building on waterways and building on uh, drainage channels, yet now they are being asked to uh, to ev evacuate, and their buildings are going to be brought down without compensation. How do you respond to some of these concerns? 
Okay, let me, I'll, I'll break it down for you, Sharon. Three years ago, okay, 20 years ago, there was a channel path for the canal, the primary collector for the whole of that area, Lake it through to Ikota River. 20 years, the alignment was created with setbacks. All the estates in Lekki 2 came to meet that alignment. For one reason or the other, people chose to encroach on the alignment. So pre-COVID, there were sad notices that we can't go on on this trajectory. You guys have to move your buildings and let us have this setback to clean this drainage and let the water flow to the Kota River. Nigerians for good hair chose to disobey government. Then COVID happened. People had to shelter for safety. Post COVID, there were sad notices again that you are, you, we have to abate this nuisance you caused on the water part. Coincidentally, four weeks ago, there was a petition from 12 villages about flooding. So we chose to go there 10 days ago. Get, on getting there, we were shocked. Your correspondents were there. We saw what was on ground. She, they covered a canal path to something lesser than a tertiary channel for water. And that was the cause of the flooding. And we had two choices to make. Should we allow this nuisance to continue or should we just remove the nuisance? And we served notices on them. We reiterated our position that, look, we are going to enforce this time around. That you have done something illegal. We can't vest legality on it. That's my own mantra. After the notices expired, we chose to enforce. It's sad. It's sad because properties had to go down. But the ripple effect is beyond those properties. Ask yourself, why would they whimsically build on a canal path? Why? It's the story of a man that has the lap of a, of, of a buffalo on his head and is still trying to open the cricket hole. What, why can't you keep the parts of the canal as it is in the original master plan? So what we are just doing is removing the nuisance to allow the water to flow to the Ikota River as originally planned. And in so doing, we are saving 12 villages by taking of this nuisance on the canal path, we are saving over 12 villages from flooding. That's on the one hand. You also said, um, yes, approvals. So if you have an illegal title, nobody can make it legal for you because the foundation of it, like you know in law is, you can't put something on nothing. So most of them that say they had approvals, from where? From where? I was at VGC on Friday. VGC has been witnessing flooding for over 12 years because three houses, three, I repeat, chose to block the canal that should take the water from VGC to the lagoon. There have been served notices. They've been very brazen in their attitude. And on getting there, it was no rocket science. We took a firm decision right there and then. Remove this extension of fence, remove the extension of property on the canal path at VGC that will allow the water flow into the lagoon. And as we speak tonight, that is being done. So we are not cherry picking enforcement here, but we are doing the right thing. We have to make a decision on our own. How do we want to respond to our environment? The environment is the master of man, not the other way around. Look at the whole world. There's a global warming. Virtually everywhere is flooding, from Sydney to Spain to the US. These are developed climes. But Lagos, the past few years, we've been able to address a lot of our flooding issues because we have been very proactive. So if we have pockets of places where they are still flooding, we must take steps to address them. It will be painful, very painful, when you see houses go down. However, Public good overrides those emotional private interests for me. So the enforcement goes beyond approval of somebody looking at them for the past few years. What do I say about that? 
when they have when they were served notices pre-COVID. So the question is that, Mr. Wahab, the yes. question is that are you putting because now those who built a few years ago on these channels and these canals will still build if you take your eyes off in the next few months. Are there processes, are there measures, there are permanent measures to ensure that people do not breach building codes and building rules in such a way that environmental breaches now will be committed and putting the lives and the livelihoods of Lagosians at risk at every other time when we have rains and the Lagos state government will Shem, now clamp Shem, down I can, I can so, safely say to as you. As a lawyer, you know, where the issue of equity now comes for someone who spent a lot of money, albeit on an illegal title that he owns, but equity then may prevail to say, what about the money spent on the property, on the land, or the hard earned money, the sweat that he has gained? So what are the permanent measures that Lagos State is putting, not just coming at every four years or three years to say, we are pulling these buildings down? So internally, we're also putting at, looking at things to put in place. To start with, we shall never allow people take a shot at public spaces and get away with it. We shall never, in capital. And we are enforcing to send a very strong signal to those, to those that are believing that they can do those things and get away with them. Now, I will come to what we are putting in place. We have said to ourselves internally, whoever is involved in any district or any area with respect to enforcement, monitoring, must be up and doing in his or our own responsibilities. We are also saying to ourselves, Whoever goes to vest title that you can't vest because you can't give what you, don't, what you do not have. Nemo, that could not abet. You are just wasting your time. Now, on our part, what we, what we have to ensure we do is ensure we enforce the law without fear or favor to anybody. So if I am enforcing the law against the man at Oshodi or Oyibo, I should have the balls to enforce it against the man in VI, Ikoyi, and Leki. I should also say to myself, institutionally, what we are doing, we have to ensure that we sustain them. And that comes in with La Sepa, with Loma, and other agencies under the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources. Loma, for instance, in the past few days, they've been making arrests for people that dump on the median of the road. And they are taking them to court. There is a mobile court for it. Now, we are also making sure that we enforce the law to the letter. If the court says, oh, you, you're guilty and you have to do communal service for 30 days, that's a form of conviction. Or if the, law, if the court says, find them for 30 days, that's a form of conviction. But Sharon, what we should not allow is, allow the, the, the environment to go to the dogs. That is what we are pulling back from. I... I I saw a video of so, a nightclub owner that attacked government officials that chose to seal a property in Lekki One. Lekki One. And I said to myself, can you touch a cop anywhere in the world? Can you just touch a cop that chose to ask you questions? You can't. So why must you be brazen to unleash your staff because your nightclub was polluting the environment with noise and they chose to seal it up you beat government officials with blood all over them. So now you are now running around that they should appeal, that we should not prosecute them. That is not going to happen. That is not going to happen. We have to make Mr. people examine. Uh, so, yes? Yeah. So let, let, me, let, let me quickly ask this. You said yes, you sent out notices yes. to some of these places. Uh, some of them are saying there are no notices from the state government. For example, in the Wode Oniri market, in uh, Ladipo market, or in uh, um, uh, My 12 market, some of these marketers are saying they have not seen any. Do you have copies of these notices that you have sent to them? Shem, At least to prepare their minds. Shem, the government uh, will for, never for see what's coming on Shem, them. The government will never take steps, firm actions without notices. For the markets, they were sad notices to but, but abide have, and think of the environment. Do you have copies? Do you have I don't copies? have them on me, yeah. But we have you copies have in the copies past. of the notices? So no, 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 no
uh, your notice to them, you can show them. Do you have it? Oh, of course, we do have them. We do have them, Shane. We do have them. We have all the notices in place. Okay. So now it brings, yeah, it brings something also to mind. Uh, you have marked a lot of buildings and structures in Lagos, and I understand that this is going to go across several areas in Lagos, preparing people's minds that if you have an illegal building, I mean, a lot of people will be asking, what were the authorities in Lagos looking at when illegal structures are being erected everywhere in Lagos, such that they have now become uh, a nuisance, just as the state government is put in them. But the question is, you have marked several buildings and several structures in Lagos for demolition because they are breaching the, uh, the, the, the master plan of Lagos State. How far reaching is this? How many buildings have you here marked for to, to go down? Um, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers, but um, for each area, we serve notices and then we mark the buildings that are on our own alignment for, for canal. Uh, that's primary collector, secondary collector. And, and what we're trying to do is let them realize that it gets to a point in our lives where we have to make a decision of who we want to be and what we want in our own environment. So nobody can tell me that I will embark on such flourishing action without a formal notice. I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not crazy. But if notices were served, for instance, the one you showed at Ikota, they had notices, they had meetings, and they told them the options. But they chose to be brazen and built more. They even built more in the course of the conversation in between to cover the whole place. And it's about that brazen attitude of nothing is going to happen. Is it not Nigeria? We're going to talk to somebody to talk to somebody. And I'm glad my principal, the governor, and his deputy had not intervened at all. I'm glad the speaker of the house had not even, because they realized we have to put this thing back on track. And they've been very supportive. And I thank them for this. So we have served notices on them. Those that we have not served, we are going to serve them with side notices. And after the notice expires, if you can't take away the property abating or forming the nuisance on my canal path, I will help you take it away. What I should be asking them to do is, you have to be paying government compensation for deploying the taxpayers' monies to fix those things that you cost, those nuisances that you cost us. And if you, on your own, think, oh, by the way, I have a title from government to justify me blocking a canal, bring your title forward. And then we come to that table to discuss it. I have asked all of them, the one at the court, right, I said, quickly, do you yeah, have a title yeah, to cover quickly, and justify this? I said, no. Yeah. Let, let me ask you quickly. Uh, Lagos State accounts for almost uh, for, I mean, uh, what, the, what, uh, the size of the part of Lagos covered by water is almost 40%. Is it and out of the entire 850 kilometer stretch of Nigeria coastline, Lagos has about almost 180 kilometers. And uh, there are those who believe that the water bodies in Lagos, that is almost uh, half of Lagos State, are potent a whole lot. And in fact, the predictions and projections of 2030, of 2050, is that most part of Lagos might be underwater if care is not taken. Uh, as of the last record that I can uh, extract is that Lagos State got about 1.48 billion naira as uh, intervention or as ecological fund intervention from the federal government. And those who will say, we have not seen the effect of such monies. Can you tell Lagosians tonight? what these kind of monies are being used for. How can they see it physically that these ecological funds are being used when rainwaters are threatening the existence of the city of Lagos? Okay, thank you very much, Shil. We have about 169 primary, primary channels. That's a big canal. And then we have over 1,000 secondary collectors in the states, and we are still doing more. I can safely tell you to do one channel of about 10 kilometers, like the one we are doing at Aburu, from, you know, from um, Abuli Egba, down through command. It's over 10 kilometers. 
the amount you mentioned from the ecological fund, with due respect, wouldn't do a fraction of that. However, we appreciate the support from federal government. The problem with us goes beyond the funding, show. It's about human attitude to the environment. We have a major channel, primary channel at um, um, Lut, in the Araba. You wouldn't believe it. People chose to make it a dustbin. People in the neighborhood chose to make that place a dustbin. And then we have to clear it off, clean the channel before the rain starts. And that's why you must have noticed we've not had flooding so much in Lagos in the past um, two, three, four cycles of rain. We have been proactive. Let us address the human issues. It's when you address the human issues, you save money on health, you save money to take care of other social investments like education. But when people are very dirty, the multiplier effect goes beyond the Ministry of Environment. The budget for Ministry of Health will skyrocket. Logically, it's not rocket science. So for me, we are trying to reset a human process. I'm a Yoruba person. And um, there's this saying from where I come from. The erosion will not tell you it's not going to come and take away your property, your building. But the owner of the house must resist and find a way to take that erosion of that part of the house. Lagos, like you said, is one third of water. A bit below the sea level, yes. But people have been living here for decades, for centuries. Why can't we find a way to sustain the environment so we can keep it for our own children and our children's children? But if you, as a person, chose to block a water path, so naturally water will find its level. I gave you the example of Victoria Garden City. I don't stay there. But they brought a petition. We saw it ourselves. Three buildings covered. They blocked a canal that should evacuate their water to the lagoon behind them. Just three buildings. And they've been on this for over a decade. So if you are in government and you, this, this, something like this comes to your table, will you cherry pick enforcement? That's a question we should ask ourselves. Atikota. 12 villages Just that never please, got started uh, before. Give me, give me we're a flooding. moment. Uh, we're yeah. 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 Please give me a moment. We're, we're due for a break. But when we come back, yeah, those allegations are coming back, I mean, here and there, about the mode and format of the enforcement in all of what Lagos State Government is doing. I'd like you to react to some of them. But also, we will go to Bayelsa State to find out how prepared INEC is for the three governorship elections coming in November 11th, the damage, uh, integrity, and the reputation of the commission, can it be repaired in these uh, exercises that will happen next month? We're finding out from INEC tonight on the program, plus Tukumba Wahab is still with me on the program, everyone. We'll be right back after this break.
and take it. No follow the do or sponsor this kind of business. Their pipeline infrastructure Nigeria Limited and NNPCL say they will tell you now. For 37 consecutive years, Anu Lagos International Trade Fair has remained the platform for indigenous and foreign exhibitors as well as visitors all over the world to showcase new products, network, and new sales for 10 solid days. This year's exhibition comes with multiple specialized fairs, which include Children's Con, Entertainment Village, Tech Hub, and African Hall. It promises to be the best. Entertainment Village will host fashion shows, carnivals, live bands by top music artists, and cultural display. As an exhibit, the fair affords you the opportunity to get your products and services showcased to over a million people at the fair. And as visitors, you get to buy household items at very discounted rates. Date, Friday the 3rd to Sunday the 12th, November 2023. Venue, Tafawa Beloa Square, TBS, Lagos State. Time, 8 a.m. day in commemoration of the 135th anniversary of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Organizers of the fair, there shall be three days of free entry for all visitors. For sponsorship and participation, call 0700-542-6724 or send an email to litf at lagoschamber.com to book your space today. Visit www.lagosinternationaltradefair.com powered by Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Proudly supported by... The win with the King War Cement promo is still on and gifts 31 LED television sets, 30 Android phones, 3,328 bags of Boa Cement, 1,114 Boa Cement branded t-shirts, 39 power generators, 144,310 recharge cards of various types, 13 raffle tickets, 756 rechargeable lamps, and 13 tricycles have all been won on the ongoing Boa Cement win with the King promo. And it's still on till 31st of October 2023. So, go now, buy a bag of Boa Cement, find the scratch card inside. Call the phone number attached to the scratch card for instructions on how to redeem your prize. There are redemption centers across the country. For details, call 0916-998-1614 or 0916-894-8542. Boa Cement, the king of strength. My name is architect Adeyemi Makinde, project director, Adron Homes and Properties Limited. I'd like to introduce to you our latest housing product, the Oremi Series. This product is designed with a concept of encouraging communal living amongst residents living within the same environment. We have the two bedroom bungalow units called Oremi, three bedroom bungalow units called Oremi Atata, and we have three bedroom duplex units called Oremi Gongong. Join us and key into the Oremi series today. The Oremi series will boast of the following. Maximum security with CCTV, swimming pool, playground, recreational area, gym, solar street lights, adequate parking space, excellent infrastructure, well laid out roads and drainage system, plus many more. Adron Homes. Building cities, communities and homes. For many years, we have secured and beautified your buildings with all security doors. And now, introducing Watson Time German, Israeli, and Turkish doors. Visit any of our factories, reach our distributors nationwide. Think doors. Think Watson Time doors. Hi. Now, let me tell you about Safari Valley Eco Resort, the first of its kind in West Africa. Upon your arrival, you are introduced to your butler, who plans your itinerary. We were surrounded by wildlife from the moment we entered the eco park. So many activities, all in the same premises. You visit the gym or the stables, they have it all. At my break, I'm able to practice my putting. We also went fishing on a man made canal. Our tour guides taught us so much about the wildlife and how to interact with them. They used only electric vehicles here. This creates a serene environment. I'm told it's over a thousand acres. My cabin here sits on two acres with a large terrace space overlooking my private swimming pool. Now this is royalty. They have their own farms, thousands of fruit trees. I can also have my lunch here at the waterfall. Quite a beautiful place you have here. Visit Safari Valley Eco Resort in Ghana, bringing you closer to nature. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Mr. Tokumbo Wahab is a commissioner of environment in Lagos, and there seems to be a lot of uh, clampdowns in Lagos State on those who are breaching environmental rules and codes in the state. He's been speaking with us from Lagos Studio. Uh, Mr. Obo Efanga is the uh, INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Bayelsa State. He's standing by to speak with us. And Mr. Wahab, please uh, permit me to take a few minutes to speak with Mr. Efanga uh, because he's virtually with us. I don't want to lose him. 
and so that we can have extract from him and some of these crucial conversations before I come back to you for your closing thought, Mr. Wahab. Let's go to Bayasa State. Um, earlier on, I, I, I did say that uh, INAC is uh, done a mock accreditation exercise yesterday in preparations for the November 11 election. And though a lot of Nigerians believe that the damaged reputation of the commission in the uh, general elections of February, March, uh, might be uh, repaired somehow, if possible, if INEC does everything right in terms of logistics and transmission of the result. Obo Efanga is a wreck of Biosa State. He joins us virtually from Yanagua. Thank you so much, Mr. Efanga, for joining us tonight. Let's clarify first and foremost. There was something that the INEC chairman said and making reference to uh, whether or not you were wrongly reported for what you have said about transmission of results. That is a very sensitive matter. In the Bayelsa, Kogi, and Imo elections, will INEC transmit results through the IREV and electronically? Thank you very much, Shem. Uh, the IREV has come to stay, just like the Beavers has come to stay. IREV was first used in 2020 by INEC. It is uh, the INEC results viewing portal. It's uh, a portal where polling unit results are uploaded. Photographs of the polling unit results are uploaded. INEC has been doing that since 2020 and will continue to do that. All right. So you're confirming to us now that that whatever you, they, you were quoted to have said that INEC is not going to transmit through IREF is untrue. And you're clearing the air now that INEC will indeed, in those three elections, in those three states on November 11, INEC will transmit via IREF. So is IREF Porter ready to go now? Yes, it is ready to go. Yesterday, when we had the mock accreditation, uh, we used the IREF portal to upload information from the mock accreditation. Uh, in the locations we did the accreditation, people came, got accredited. That information was recorded on the BVAS, that's a bimodal voter accreditation system device. And at the end of it, we also uh, had a mock result sheet, which we used the BBAS to take a photograph of, and that was uploaded on the IREF. There are those who will also say that some of your officials, the ad hoc officials, INEC is using, INEC perhaps are not giving what they call a proper training, because if you look at the general elections of February, the kind of image that was transmitted into the IREF, how am I becoming? There are some of them that are totally unreadable. Some of them you cannot even access. Some of them you cannot even uh, read what exactly I do in those uh, images posted on the RF portal. Is there a retraining or what efforts are you making? Because there are those who will believe that INEC is cutting corners by these uh, kind of actions. Well, for every of our elections, you always have fresh trainings and retrainings. So the people who are going to be involved in this election will undergo series of trainings at different levels. We even have training the night before the election also, apart from the previous trainings they would have received. And so we don't expect that there will be much of a problem with uh, that uh, the use of uh, the beavers uh, in this election. We are working towards that. And it's also one of the reasons that we did the mock accreditation yesterday across the three states uh, in some uh, selected polling units. And um, the report we've got from those uh, uh, mock accreditation shows that um, we are good to go. All right. Now, ANEC uh, came out on, on, on this very program. ANEC told Channels Television that there were glitches, and that was the reason why ANEC could not post some results on, I mean, that the IREF did not work optimally for the presidential election. Have you identified the glitches? Because uh, will it make sense if ANEC is going into another round of elections and those glitches have not been identified? You are a resident electoral commissioner. What do you understand or know about these glitches? Technically speaking, what can you tell us about these glitches? Okay, so let me remind you that uh, after the presidential election where the um, uh, challenges um, occurred, 
even in that same presidential election, those results were uh, eventually uploaded. And the elections that happened after then, the governorship and the House of Assembly elections, we didn't have any such uh, a, a situation. And also yesterday, like I said, we did the test run again of the system and uh, it worked very well. So um, I would uh, look forward to having um, an election that is well conducted and the results are uploaded to the portal and um, winners met through uh, this process. So I do not uh, entertain any fears concerning that. So, but we want to learn from what has happened, the errors of the past. Can Nigerians know uh, you are uh, very senior officials of INEC. What are these glitches? We understand that you may have fixed them ahead of the November 11 elections, but can we know what you know as per the glitches that really happened? The taxpayers, well, what do they have the right well, and the privilege to know tonight what the glitches are and how you have corrected them? Well, what I know is that there were uh, uh, problems with the uploading that uh, evening after the elections, and eventually they were uh, corrected, and the results were eventually uploaded later that night and, uh, and subsequently. And the elections we conducted after then, uh, we didn't have that problem, and the uh, results were uploaded. And like I said yesterday, we also had the test run, and the results were uploaded. So I would rather focus on what we need to do as INEC going forward uh, to conduct the election and ensure that uh, those results are uploaded. I don't, like I said earlier, I do not envisage uh, such problem happening again. You know, uh, when it comes to election, uh, integrity of the process is, it also helps the psychology of the voters in terms of turning out and also even entrusting uh, that, I mean, given the trust into the umpire to do its job, uh, of course, helping security and safeguarding the process. Um, is INEC aware of what may have been uh, a, a, a largely an irreparable damage to his reputation? And what is the commission doing to fix this? Well, we what we do is, what we have to do is to conduct a, elections the way they are meant to be conducted and that's what we'll continue to do and that's what we'll do in this next election and when we do that and people see the, the process that is followed through and the outcome i'm sure that uh, people would believe uh, more and more with INEC. there's been improvements in the processes of election in this country uh, from time past if we look at uh, how elections have been conducted in the past how uh, winners have emerged in the past i think that uh, there's a great improvement. One of the improvements you, we must uh, acknowledge is the fact that the actual number of uh, votes recorded reflects what actually happened on election day. Uh, gone are those days where you could have accreditation and then you have votes more than uh, what was accredited or how many people actually turned up at the polling units. That's why uh, the figures from the election seem to be lower these days than what we used to have in the and that is simply because the um, the process we've used is such that it's, uh, you are not going to be able to vote because a, a, a bimodal vote accreditation system device would not accredit you. All right, let me. Uh, I don't uh, envy you at all right now, uh, 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 Mr. Fanga, because um, you were once working at those state in River State. And now in Bielsa State, these are not uh, the easiest places to conduct elections. Uh, anybody who knows Oboyafanga, who was uh, a civil society person before coming into INEC, we know that he's almost a perfect gentleman, but why would he be thrown into some of the most difficult places to conduct elections? That's why I say I do not envy you. But Obo, if you can tell us. Uh, Timmy Presilva, the APC candidate, the court as... Uh, the federal court in Abuja uh, disqualified him. As far as we know, does the APC have a candidate uh, for in going into this election at the moment? Sorry, I didn't hear that part very well. I was asking about Timmy Presiva, the candidate of the APC in Bayelsa State. He was disqualified earlier in the week. And as, as we know, as, as of now, does the APC have 
a governorship election, uh, a governorship candidate on the ballot as of now, as of today? Well, that's a, a question that uh, would, should be answered by the headquarters of INEC. Uh, the commission uh, had published the list of candidates and parties for this election. And uh, as of this moment, and I'm not, I'm not aware that there has been a change in that list of candidates and political parties in the election. When, if, when and if such a change occurs, then we will, uh, uh, we will know. But of this moment, I'm not aware that there has been any uh, change in the list of candidates and political parties in the election. So you're not aware of uh, the court case which disqualified him in Prince Silva as a wreck on that state? So, you have not been officially communicated to? No, no, I don't have any official communication to that effect. Ekeremo, Southern Ijo, uh, Brass, these are some local government areas in Bayasa State that has caused election to be inconclusive. Are you prepared for the worst case scenario coming from that election, uh, Obo? Yes, we are prepared for the worst case scenario and we are also prepared for the best case scenario. And what could be the worst case scenario? Could it be logistics? Because that being uh, a major problem for INEC. Because sometimes I've covered elections severally in Bayasa states, traveled underwater for several minutes, and I do know that a lot of the times it takes, in fact, at midday, uh, uh, materials are not left uh, the shores of Yanagua to some of these areas. What have you done to ensure that this does not uh, replay itself? Well, we are improving on that. We've had uh, uh, meetings and strategies on this. Uh, we are working with um, relevant stakeholders to ensure that um, we deploy materials early enough to all the locations. And um, in the last election conducted here, the uh, House of Assembly election conducted, um, the problems uh, that they had in the presidential election and the National Assembly election, were, they were able to contend that in the House of Assembly election. So I think that we can only improve on that. All right. Obo Efanga is the resident electoral commissioner for INEC in Bayelsa State. I wish you the very best as uh, Canada Salvation is keeping tabs on what is happening across the six, uh, three states in, for the November 11 governorship election. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Efanga, for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Sheldon. I appreciate it. Let's get back to our Lagos studio with Tokumba Wahab, the commissioner for environment in Lagos, on our closing moment. Uh, there are those who are accusing the Lagos State government that uh, the government or officials of government are asking them for money to reopen their uh, uh, short outlets or markets or uh, uh, um, offices. Um, are you aware of these allegations? Yes, and I, I said to them when I called them for a meeting that if by adventure you bribe any government official, after you met the requirement and we unseal, we shall come back to seal because it shows you induced them with the report. The report. So clearly, it's not going to happen under, under my watch. So it's never going to happen under my watch. I was aware and it was a Ladipo market. And we called and they denied it and they made a press release the next day that nothing of such happened. So I will take their words for it. And per adventure, um, we get to know that there was a form of inducement or the other, which shall take steps. There are steps within the structure, within the civil service rules. And then we shall address that appropriately when we get to that bridge. But as far as I know, I trust the people that work with me in the Ministry of Environment. I've been on the field with them. I lead the charge myself. And I'm proud to say nothing of such, from Loma to La Sepa to Lhasa to Wastewater to Water Corporation, you name it, to drainage services, to CHI, to health officers, they are up and doing. To the tax force on the environment, they are up and doing. And um, I want to encourage them to do more. And I appeal to negotiations also. We don't have to get to this point of enforcement. So, cleanliness is next to godliness. Both religion, both key religion, Muslims, Christians, espouse such that if you are clean, 
you know, at, at the next level to godliness. So why can't we keep our environment clean for God's sake? Why can't we take the extra steps not to throw our dust, our, our waste in the drainage parts? It doesn't cost us anything but discipline. And All right. also so going go forward, yeah. also that, going forward. I think, yeah. Also going forward, we are going to take steps to strengthen the waste management system. Looking at the circular economy leg of it, turning waste to wealth, waste to power, is, in, is, is here with us to, to explore. But we need our people to start changing their orientation that we shall not continue on this trajectory. We need to save our environment, to save ourselves. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Wahab, we need to close now, and I have just less than 60 seconds to do that. There are fears about the opening of the Ogun Dam, the Lagdo Dam, and there are fears also that the fact that some list state government have learned nothing in respect of the disasters, the flood disasters that swept farms, uh, houses, livelihoods that killed several people in the past few years. And the question is, what is Lagos State doing in the case of this large-scale flooding? We've seen it happen even in the center of uh, the city, even in the eyebrow areas of the city, in Lekki, upper uh, area of Lagos, flooded areas of this city. And I remember Muiz Banira, when he was Minister of, I mean, Commissioner for Environment, he said, if you are living in Mushin, if you are living in Agege, congratulations. But if you are living in Lekki and other parts of this other Ibra area, you are, you are going to be having another problem. This is several years ago. Can you tell us on one hand, some of these areas that are prone to possible flood disasters, and what is Lagos State doing to avert a possible flood disaster? Just in less than six minutes. Thank you very much. We have been very proactive. Um, all our primary channels, like 169 of them, we've been distilling and clearing them off to prepare for it. And for the secondary, we're also doing that across the states. For the tertiary, we're even getting involved to intervene where local governments should get to do their jobs because we don't want to pass the buck for now. So, Shane, as a state, we have prepared ourselves for it and we shall continue to do the enlightenment and advocacy for those people that are staying on those plain paths, like Agboyi and that, the corridor on that path, that they should be ready to evacuate if, as we monitor the water level, goes higher than it is, we tell them move out for this and these reasons. By the way, Global warming is not right. peculiar to us. So flooding will not be peculiar to us. But it now requires us to be proactive with our environment and let the environment that is our master help us in the way we handle it. Or else, but the rest are short. Lagos can't be flooded. Yeah, there will be ponded right. in one or two areas, but within two, three hours, they are gone. But as a state, we have been very proactive. We are distilling, we are clearing uh, primary channels and distilling and cutting right. away uh, secondary collectors across the states. And help me appeal to Lagosians, Shio, we don't have to use force to get the messages out. We want them to cooperate. We want them to see the bigger picture that whatever All we right. do in the Ministry of Environment replicates and have a multiplier effect on the Ministry of Health. And then mm -hmm. if we save money from health, All we right. cannot put money in social safety nets to take care of the citizens. Dokumba, we need to go now. We are totally out of time. Yeah. yeah. Talking about Wahab, the Commissioner for Environment in Lagos, who advised the governor on education matters the last time around, is now being the enforcement in chief as the Commissioner for Environment in Lagos at the moment. Thank you so much, Tokumba, for your time. Thank you for having me, Shil. All right, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow again at 7 p.m. God bless Nigeria. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, welcomes broadcasters, content creators, tech experts, exhibitors, and investors from Nigeria and all over to the 13th edition of Africast. Africast is the destination event where local and global industry players experience the latest innovative technologies, services, products, and markets.